What is up, everyone? Dan here, Crypto Capital Venture, May 3rd, 2019. Crazy that it's May. Sorry I'm running a little bit late, anybody that was waiting. Um, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, Litecoin, making a couple really interesting moves in terms of all the technical analysis we've been doing over the last few months even. Uh, and I'm not going to get too ahead of ourselves with it, but Bitcoin and Litecoin do make a big move. Um, if you're a replay viewer, the move that we're going to talk about, right, at least for Bitcoin right here on these charts, Bitcoin Weekly, is this weekly candle, right? And this is actually, I want to go to a, a live chart so we can really get a better idea. So here's a weekly candle for Bitcoin. That's the move that we're going to talk about today. Um, and for Litecoin, the Litecoin move that we're going to talk about, really, we can look at the daily chart. That's the move. This daily candle right through up and above and even the previous two days red candles but red candles above the 50 moving average on the daily chart really really interesting um and i guess what i want to say is we as we're tracking bitcoin and litecoin and we've been tracking it we've been doing a lot of comparing to that last bear market i mean so many people have right it's it's a great data point to use for technical analysis but here's here's litecoin for instance in that last bear market and we've really been using that that whole chart for context and it's followed itself so beautifully in the last however many months as we're trying to define the end of this bear market and what has happened and i said once it happens we're going to talk about it we're going to do a video is when it kind of diverges, when it does something different, we're going, I'm going to say, it did something different, everybody. And we're going to talk about it. And that's what I want to, that's what I want to talk about. So um, if you're a replay viewer, you feel free. Dude, we got Bitcoin Ben in the house with a 499 super chat for the Launchpad Foundation. Bitcoin Ben, what is up, my man? I never see you around these parts. Welcome to the, welcome to the Crypto Capital Venture YouTube channel. Please don't go live within the next half hour. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it, man. I think we'll I think we'll be seeing you in Jersey soon, right? Definitely looking forward to it, man. Definitely looking forward to it. Thank you for the super chat, dude. So if you're a replay viewer, hit the timestamp below if you kind of want to go right to the charts. It's gonna just be a few minutes. I want to talk about a couple things. So I'm gonna start this live stream talking about number one. First off, this tweet, John Kersey, John Kersey, he runs an app called Cheddar. Go check him out. Go follow him on Twitter. He's a cool dude, really cool dude. And um, he tweeted, when was this? May 2nd. He said, in one year from now, Tesla will be pushing a software update to the app store to become a million plus robo taxi car company that'll disrupt Uber, Uber overnight. P.S. In five to seven years, I bet each of these robo taxis will be accepting Bitcoin. I want to talk about that point, but I want to look at this video that he referenced, which is which is a you know the end of April. Elon Musk talking about this. What the problem is? It's a very short little piece of the clip I want to show, but it's going to probably be echoey. This video might be a little echoey. I had I started clearing out the the foam sound protector thing, whatever you call it. Uh, because we're moving. AJ Productions, $5 super chat for the Launchpad Foundation. God bless you, brother. That's all I wanted to say. God bless you, dude. And thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Um, and I know Sarah does as well for the Launchpad Foundation. So God bless you as well, AJ Productions. So check this out real quick. I hope this isn't too echoey. I'll, I'll tell you what he says if you can't hear it very well. It's difficult to like when when things are an exponential at an exponential rate of improvement. It's 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 very difficult to kind of wrap one's mind around it because we're used to extrapolating on a linear basis. All right, couple things. Number one, did you hear what he just said? It's hard to wrap your head around 
a technology, something like this happening at an exponential basis. He's talking about his Tesla cars. Literally, you can have a Tesla and you can Uber it out. Picture this world where you're Ubering out your Tesla and somebody is like summoning your car. A network of Teslas driving people around everywhere. Available in, in like a year. And he's talking about this, this exponential growth, right? This exponential growth is hard to wrap your, your head around. And you know what it reminds me of? Something very simple. This alone. Exponential growth. It's hard to wrap your head around. It's hard to wrap your head around hash rates. Litecoin hash rates. All-time high. It's hard to wrap your head around... Bitcoin and Litecoin adoption and price increase and the potential for price increase. It's hard to wrap your head around it. This exponential growth in technology and Elon Musk is literally saying the same thing about, you know, Tesla and his cars and what they're doing with that technology. And Bitcoin Ben, another 999 super chat. Please, everyone, send in a super chat. Show these charities at the crypto community's all heart. Dude. Bitcoin Ben, thank you, man. Thank you for the super chat for our Launchpad Foundation. And it really is. Ben's Ben's doing so much too for the crypto community, charities. And I think if you could if you could define crypto community, it is all heart. There's so much outside of just kind of the tech talk and the price talk. It's insane. And um Ben, I appreciate the super chat. And we got Cameron Work with a super chat. Litecoin is the right coin. $10 super chat for Launchpad Foundation. Benji Jojo, 0.25 LTC super chat. LTC super chat for Launchpad Foundation. Dude, you guys are killing me. You're overwhelming me on this Friday at 5.50 p.m. Eastern. Weird time to do a live stream. You guys are overwhelming me with these super chats. Thank you so much, everybody. Um... It truly means it truly means a lot. Cameron, thank you for the super chat. Ben, Benji, Jojo, God bless you. God bless you guys. Um, so the the second part of this tweet, which is, is interesting to me, I bet each of these robo taxis will be accepting Bitcoin in five to seven years. So that's what John Kersey said, and I don't know the time frame. Right? It could be sooner. I think I saw Ben in the chat say sooner than that. It could be five to seven years. It could be longer. But this is what I'm talking about with this this tech technological advance outside of crypto, something like Tesla. When these things, these technologies come to a crossroads, they're going to intermingle and they're going to help each other. And you have a tech pioneer like, like Elon, uh, who obviously is a supporter of cryptocurrency, this is something that I see happening. Each of these robo taxes will be accepting Bitcoin, Litecoin. I 100% I, I agree. I 100% envision that is the world that we're going to see. Thornton Plug Plumbing with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Thornton Plumbing, for the super chat. Launchpad Foundation. <laughs> ben with a $24.99 super chat. Someone beat this super chat. I dare you. Dude, Ben, you're killing me, dude. Ben, you're killing me. <laughs> um thank you man thank you for the super chat and honestly i dare everybody else to beat that super chat it doesn't feel i when when we weren't taking 100 percent of super chats and putting them into launchpad foundation it was tough for me to accept them um we have alan amudis with a 200, I'm not sure what currency that is. But Bitcoin, Bitcoin Ben, thank you. Appreciate it, Ben. Thank you, Alan, so much for the super chat. You guys are ridiculous. I, like, I'm having trouble getting to the video because all these super chats are coming in. Replay viewers are going to hate me. I'm sorry, replay viewers. Liquid Canvas with a $5 super chat. Got to give to receive. Crypto is helping. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Liquid Canvas. Awesome to see you here. You guys, all of you are awesome. I don't, you guys know it. You know I love you. Thank you. Um, 
So we watch. We watch as technology grows. We watch as crypto becomes adopted more and more, right? This is this is the bottom line. And I wanted to throw that out there. Let's talk about let's talk about prices a little bit. I tweeted this April 30th, right? So a few days ago. I said I believe it's most likely both Bitcoin and Litecoin will see 30% to 40% to the downside in the coming weeks. This will mark the end of the bear market and provide one great opportunity of accumulation for many. It's probably, it, obviously it's an incredibly unpopular opinion. When I tweeted this a few days ago, it was a very unpopular opinion. Today, May 3rd, Bitcoin up, you know, $5,600, $5,700. It's even more unpopular opinion. I still do think it's more likely that we're going to get a big retracement. Um, I'm really interested to see where we end up at this week's close. Um, that has a lot to do with it. But I really truly believe that we might, I think we're going to get a pretty large pullback. Um, and we're going to talk about that. So let's kind of jump into the charts. 11 minutes in for mental notes for replay viewers. This was a tweet from yesterday. This fourth weekly candle here on Bitcoin weekly chart will be extremely telling as to where Bitcoin goes next. Look at 2015 chart below and what happened after fourth week rejection. So this is kind of, this is that divergence from that last bear market we're talking about. This was right here, you see on the screen. This is what the chart looked like. This is from my tweet. The fourth week, right? Bitcoin just from that bear market bottom ran up to this blue line, the 50 moving average on the weekly chart, ran up to that blue line. We got a one Litecoin super chat. How about that, Ben? Love you, Dan. We have a one Litecoin super chat, literally right now. Everybody, we're easily over $1,000 for the last 30 days in terms of what we've raised for Launchpad Foundation. You guys are awesome. This is, I'm telling you, going to be an insanely awesome year. Anonymous, thank you for the one Litecoin super chat. It's unbelievable. Poseidon Lou with a half a Litecoin super chat. I'm going to have to take a breather here in a second. <laughs> you guys. Bitcoin Ben's going live at 6.30 CST, everybody. Mark it. Go check them out. And go match all of these super chats on his. Thank you, Anonymous, Poseidon, Lou. You guys are awesome. Um, man, Ben really got the ball rolling, didn't he? <laughs> $2 super chat. Love your live charts. A little for the cause. Thanks, R. Rafter, man. Awesome to see you here. Definitely recognize that screen name. Thank you for from the Launchpad Foundation um, for the super chat. 50 moving average, resistance, and we, we saw a big down down downtrend right three hundred dollars down to you know close it wicked down to like two hundred dollars or something right that was then and then now what i'm talking about in this tweet is this is interesting right this is that fourth weekly candle this time around and it's really when i posted this testing that 50 moving average on the weekly and since i posted that what has happened this is it this is the big move you currently see Bitcoin trading on the weekly above the 50 moving average. Where will it close? I think it is a very important question to ask yourself right now, Friday at 5.58 p.m. Eastern time. Going into this weekend, what's this weekly candle going to look like? Will there be volatility in the next 24 hours even? Could this candle, could this end up just being a kind of a, a wick above the 50 moving average, meaning... By tomorrow, will we be under $5,400? The volatility of Bitcoin is much to be anticipated. You have to anticipate things like that happening. Um, but at the very least, this could be the beginning of something, something very big. And Rob just said it in the chat. I just saw it. Needs volume. And that is the, that is the key. This entire thing needs volume to continue. Otherwise, that 30 to 40% pullback, it's, it's coming. And in my tweets, I said, um, where, where is it? Right here. 30 to 40% to the downside in the coming weeks. 
if we don't get volume, I think in the coming weeks, we will get that big that big pullback. So, um, and, and by the way, everybody, with everything that we're talking about in this live stream, I want to say this. These are just my thoughts and my opinions. This is how I trade. Um, this is how I don't trade. This is how I accumulate. This is how I watch the charts. And this is what I do, right? Please take what I'm talking about. Do whatever you want with it. Other YouTubers, take what they're talking about. Make your own decisions. Find what you're comfortable with, right? It could go up and go down. That's the bottom line. Nobody can tell you which direction it's going to go. And if they tell you and it happens, they were right. There's a 50-50 chance that you're going to be right. You call up or down. It's, it's really simple. But what's important is you're ready for both scenarios. That is literally the most important thing. Um, for transparency, I don't always do this, um, but I was just curious, so I checked it out. Um, I don't always accumulate, especially when we're overextended from a moving average. I usually accumulate after we're getting 10, 20% dips, but I'm always buying Bitcoin and Litecoin, just not as much. So my last not as much type of purchase was April 12th when Bitcoin was at around $5,100. Um, it was kind of hugging this long-term downtrend uh, on this daily chart here. It was kind of a, a higher low in this upward trend and I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy a little Bitcoin. That was the last time I bit some, bought some Bitcoin. Litecoin, I think, was twenty April 24th. I just looked. was the last time I bought some Litecoin. I haven't been buying a lot. I really haven't been as of lately. I buy after we get overextension to the upside and we get a massive pullback to a moving average. And we get like a 15%, 20% dip. That's usually when I'm buying. Um, but for transparency purpose, I thought I'd throw that out there. That's the last time I bought some Bitcoin because there's always a potential that Bitcoin just takes off and, and really diverges and volume comes out of nowhere and Bitcoin goes crazy. Um, but what's important is that you all are ready no matter what happens. Ready to buy if it goes down and comfortable to enjoy the ride if it goes up. So that's Bitcoin on the weekly chart. Uh, you can really just get a sense of uh, our zoomed out charts that we have this move this is what we've been tracking is bitcoin right here in terms of last bear market rejection at the 50 moving average or is bitcoin maybe right here where we're going to break through to the upside the 50 moving average and enter a whole new world right a whole new bull market are the bulls going to step in don't know but like rob just said we need the volume for that to happen we're not quite there yet. Is Bitcoin testing that 50 moving average? Absolutely, as of right now. But where is it going to close? What's going to happen in the next couple of days? It's a really big question uh, that we need to take into account. Um, what I want to look at, my charts are loading so slow. So what I want to look at is I want to look at the daily chart in terms of kind of this Bitcoin doing something different from that last bear market. Um, this was the last bear market, right? So one thing is true. Bitcoin f had this first 50 moving average cross above the 200 moving average. You see it right here. Overextension, almost around 30% from the 50 moving average at that time. Bitcoin fell into kind of a descending triangle, right? And what's the biggest thing that happened to Bitcoin? No support above the 50 moving average and it continued down, right? And that's kind of a move that we've been wondering, are we going to get this time around for Bitcoin? And if you go to Bitcoin in in this most recent cross, what's different? Overextension from the 50 moving average is kind of the same, 25%, right? So we can call it 25, 30%. But what's different? This pattern is different. It's a rising wedge. We have some higher highs. We have higher lows. We don't have this descending triangle, right? So that's that's one thing that is a little bit different. Um, but what is most different is this higher high, this exact higher high that we're in on the daily chart right now. Um, and it's something to really take a look at. Um, but within context of taking a look at that, you have to watch the current pattern that we're in. Are we going to break to the upside? Are we going to actually break to the upside of this rising wedge? Or is it going to pan out how most rising wedges do pan out to the downside, 
Not all, but most, right? We're seeing resistance clearly at the top of this wedge. This is all from a pattern perspective. Um, so right now, if you're looking at charts and you wanna watch it going into this weekend, what happens? We might get a pullback very simply in the next couple of days, right? To the bottom of this wedge. We might get a pullback on the weekly chart where we actually fall back below. Before we get a weekly cl close, back below this 50 moving average. If that happens, everybody, please take it into account. Um, use that as a, as a very important indicator. And this is something that we, that we really need to um, watch. I think it's probably the most important thing we need to watch going into this weekend is this 50 moving average area, $5,400. Is Bitcoin going to stay above it? Or is something going to happen within this rising wedge on the daily that we're tracking? And is Bitcoin going to kind of see resistance here at this higher high, bounce back down, and ultimately probably below the $5,400 area towards the bottom of this, of this wedge? Furthermore, if it does go below there, is it going to break below the bottom trend line, right? These are things that happen in real time. This is, this is what charting is all about. Um, I use tradingview.com to track this on my phone and they have an app. So if you're keen on tracking price, then you know this is what I'm looking at, right? This is kind of the context of what I'm looking at. Thornton Plumbing with a $5 super chat. Dan, do you think we are in a cup and handle pattern on the macro? Hey, thanks to you and others, I have learned to read the charts. Thornton Plumbing, thank you so much for the $5 chat, uh, super chat. Um, I, don't, I don't ever really use cup and handles. I know there's a lot of people that are always talking about cup and handles. I just don't use them. I don't think you maybe ever once heard of me talk about a couple cup and handle. Um, certainly looks looks that way. Um, Rob even just says big cup and handle on the BTC pair. There you go. Um, but I just don't use them. I don't know why. There's just there's certain things I like. There's certain things I don't like. Um, a cup and handle is just something I don't like talking about. I don't know. That's just my preference. But thank you so much for the, a cup and handle is not my cup of tea. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so Bitcoin charts, that's what I'm looking at. Are we going to break out of this pattern to the upside or downside? Upside, we're gonna see that volume that Rob was just talking about in the chats that we need to see. And Bitcoin's gonna test an incredibly, ridiculously big area. You're gonna to see tons of, you know, coin telegraph articles or whatever. That is this six thousand dollar area, right here, right. And if we do break, if volume comes and we break to the upside, it's most likely going to aggressively break through six thousand um, dollars. The way this chart is kind of panned out right now, I don't see it. I don't see a lot of resistance at six thousand dollars, even though it's a huge mental barrier. Obviously. Uh, this puts a bear market taste in your mouth all all of this time everybody remembers the bear market and uh hanging above the six thousand ultimately breaking below six thousand well interestingly enough we're approaching that area so break to the upside out of this wedge breaking six thousand dollars break to the downside weekly close above or below 5400 below the 50 moving average on the weekly be extremely aware of that area. So that's Bitcoin. I actually also wanted to check out, um, I wanted to check out the RSI. So if we look at the RSI and we kind of zoom out on the charts, this chart is a very messy one to look at, but let's go to this one. Edward DeSantos, a dollar super chat. Edward, pound, thank you for the super chat for the Launchpad Foundation. Appreciate you, Edward. Seems like a new name. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. I hope you're a subscriber. Uh, appreciate the super, the super chat. So weekly RSI is something that is very interesting to look at. Zoom it out on the chart. Let's kind of get, let's get an idea of uh, time frame here. So here's this current market that we're in. Here's this last bear market bottom that we've really been talking a lot about, right? There's a 50 moving average on the weekly that we're talking about right now. 
And let's look at the RSI. So this is actually what's most interesting in terms of uh, momentum oscillator perspective. If you look at the RSI, when Bitcoin broke through the 50 moving average in that extremely bullish move, looking back in time right here, um, simultaneously, Bitcoin on the RSI was breaking right through that 50, like 52, 52 area on the RSI. And through that entire bull market, right, all the way to the top, to all time highs, like $20,000, that area around 52 on this RSI on the weekly chart was just bull market support. It, it gives us, and in this next bull market, it's going to probably provide us great context and a great uh, data point to look at in terms of Bitcoin. Um, but what you see is Bitcoin in that entire bear market, bull market, just seeing support right, right above that line. So what's most interesting right now is when Bitcoin saw rejection at the 50 moving average for that first time, right, back in that last bear market, it also saw rejection. It didn't hold above the, the, this line, this, this long-term RSI line, right around 52. Um, it actually fell back below. It didn't go all the way into oversold. It didn't get crazy, but we fell back down to the 200 moving average, a move that we've been talking about a lot on this channel, totally totally possible still but for context this line is a really good line in terms of if you're watching the momentum of bitcoin to see if it holds support is bitcoin momentum going to hold support here right so if we do get a pullback even a mini one right down to the low 5000s what's this weekly chart going to look like are we going to get another bounce off of this line right here on this rsi if we do if we get a bounce there that will be extremely telling that is a very bullish indicator for me. It's something that we'll talk about on this channel. It's something that we just have to sit back, be patient for to see what happens. Um, otherwise, on the flip side, we might not even retrace and we might get what we got in that last bull market, which is to say we penetrate right through that, that line on the RSI and we, we, we just see some nice gains right into overbought area before we consolidate a little bit. That's what happened in that last bear market. Um, could that happen right now? Absolutely. Price range wise, from that 50 moving average, Bitcoin actually was overextended around 90%. That, that wick on the weekly chart, around 90%. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying if, if volume comes in and Bitcoin just kind of breaks right through this 50 moving average and continues, we're going to be overextended 90%. But if we were, what would that look like? you know, close to $10,000. So it begs the question, is that $10,000 area, that next area of resistance, if, if, if this truly is going to be a Bitcoin move uh, similar to that last time we broke through the 50 moving average and entered a whole new Bitcoin bull market? Um, the potential's there. I still lean towards a retracement in the shorter term, in the coming weeks. I do. Um, but I'd be an idiot not to take into account what's happening right now with this 50 moving average above uh, this, this weekly candle above the 50 moving average simultaneous with the similarities in this RSI. The potential for, for gains right now for Bitcoin is extremely strong. I'm just one of those people with the opinion that there'll be a retracement, right? that the next four weeks aren't going to be four huge weekly green candles. I don't think so. If you're listening to me, don't take that as truth. Take that as some dude from Pennsylvania on a YouTube channel with his own opinion. That could be completely wrong. So don't base your decisions on my opinion, please. So um, Litecoin, April 30th tweet. In last night's live stream, we were talking about how Litecoin could diverge away from its long-term trend comparative to 2015. The first step would be a daily close above the 50 moving average. So we just talked about Bitcoin breaking through the weekly 50 moving average, right? It's, it's there right now. Will it hold? Will it close above it? Very interesting to see. I'm excited to watch it over the next couple of days. Now, Litecoin 
How, how is it diverging away from the last bear market? It's this, it's, it's right here. This is what I tweeted about. It was a move where, you know, $71.99 breaking above the 50 moving average. That's not something that happened in the last bear market. Um, and I want to, I want to look at that because I just tweeted earlier today, Litecoin has officially diverged away from its 2015 trend with this support at 50 moving average. This will be invi invigorating to track. So here it is. Check it out. This is on the tweets. Um, I tweeted, you know, when we were right here below that red candle or, or that big green candle when we first traded uh, above the 50 moving average on the daily chart. And now a few days later, we're actually, we have a nice whole daily candle above the 50 moving average. So let's look at it real quick. This is it. This is it in real time. This is the chart because it's extremely telling. So we, when we got this move right here, this candle, we're basically saying, okay, Litecoin has finally just separated itself from that last bear market because as well as it's tracked itself, Litecoin, after its swing high, once it broke below the 50 moving average, this blue line, it tested it, but it didn't break back above it, right? And that's a big move on the daily charts. The 50 moving average is a really big data point that we talk about a lot on this channel. And so when we get this like resistance below the 50 moving average here, and it's failing to kind of test it or break it for like a week, that's telling for Litecoin, right? And then we're followed by like 35% gains to, or losses to the downside. Uh, this time around, Litecoin actually did something different, finally then that last bear market we had the swing high similar to that last bear market right so you know swing high but last bear market right here this is 2015 and then break through the 50 moving average never to break back above it this bear this bear market bottom you know swing high coming down, breaking through the 50 moving average, just like last bear market. But what happened this time around in the last few days, we've broken back above the 200, the 50 moving average. And this is a really important thing that we have to evaluate. Cause this is that, this is one of those moves that I said, if we get this divergence away from that last bear market for Litecoin or Bitcoin, we'll talk about it. Like this is really important. It is a big move. Um, which is what the title is. Bitcoin and Litecoin make a big move. They're big moves. Because now we have to see and we have to track if they hold, right? So um, the other thing is there's momentum. There's room for Litecoin to keep going, right? Litecoin has retraced a good amount. So there's, there's a lot of room on, the, on these daily charts for Litecoin to see a good amount of upside. Mathe van Dalin. I completely butchered your, butchered your name. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate you from myself and the Launchpad Foundation. Thank you for, thank you for coming by as well. And I, I wish I could have pronounced your name better. I apologize. So ton of momentum to the upside, ton of opportunity to the upside. Even look at the MACD momentum shifting, right? The MACD line close to the signal line, histogram almost above the zero. There's a lot of room for Litecoin to go crazy again. So I want to throw that out there. So on the upside, uh, what I'm looking at obviously is a retest of this upper trend line, this long term trend line stemming back to December. And, you know, we've been tracking this for months now and it's just played out really well. We have a lot of, um, data to use for charting with with Litecoin. Uh, and now we have this support above the 50 moving average. So on this daily chart, at the very least, what I'm looking for is, is this previous swing high on the daily to previous swing low at the bottom of that orange wedge, right? So if, if Litecoin continues, and if even Litecoin actually breaks through this upper trend line, this long term upper trend line, first of all, that would be a bullish move. That trend line provides us a lot of good context 
for resistance to the upside right now. Um, and if Litecoin is kind of refusing to break through this entire wedge to the downside and revisit the $60, $50 area, if it's just refusing to do it and volume comes in after this retracement, things can get wild, things can get crazy. Hundred plus dollar Litecoin could could very well come in the coming weeks. It could, right? If we don't get this retracement that I've been talking about. So, on the upside, the very first thing that I'm looking at is this Fibonacci retracement after this this white uh, upper trend line. So Fibonacci retracement is swing high down to swing low, and then we have our uh, we have our channel right here, the seven eight six six one eight channel. And that's what I'd be looking at. I want to see what happens uh, in terms of Litecoin. And I know it was probably a few days ago or last week sometime when I was doing a video and I was talking about like the potential for Litecoin to really see some strong downside. But then I also talked about what I would like to see to the upside. And this is one of those scenarios. Um, kind of to see Litecoin start forming a falling wedge of sorts, right? Even if we get resistance at this Fibonacci retracement channel, um, it could it could serve as a lower high uh, for Litecoin that kind of just sets itself up as kind of a falling wedge, right? And you can see it here. And even if that extended into early summer or whatever, it could really set Litecoin up for a very strong bullish move. Even if Litecoin saw resistance here, and fell back down right to this to this 50 moving average even on the daily chart seventy dollars sixty dollars um, this falling wedge that could potentially be in play could really be an awesome setup for Litecoin to really make that true bullish ru bullish run out of this bear market right um, you know and these are just things that we have to watch. But it could set itself up for gains like this, where, where at the end of that last bear market, Litecoin was seeing some pretty cool gains, 100, almost 100%, so 90, 90, uh, 80% gains right there, consolidation, you know, the volatility of it all. This falling wedge that could potentially happen um, could be nice. So that's Litecoin. That's what I'm looking at on Litecoin. Um, and here it is. Here's Litecoin on the weekly. And I, I had this last on the charts because I wanted to, I thought it was a good way to really just tie together all of all of this stuff that we're talking about because there's a lot going on, obviously. But um, this is Litecoin on the weekly. It is very simple. Um, is Litecoin going to just go parabolic and break $100 without retracing to the 50 moving average like I've been thinking it is going to? Perhaps it might. You know, this 50 moving average on the weekly chart is all the way down here at $60, right? So to get a retracement to that area from a price range perspective, we're looking at 27% at the very least for a light point to the downside. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm still thinking of retracement, right? Based on my tweets. I believe it's most likely Bitcoin, Litecoin will see 30%, 40% to the downside in the coming weeks. I still lean towards that. I want to be transparent about that. I realize I might be wrong and probably get a lot of hate if, if it doesn't happen and we just continue the upside. Um, but that's kind of where I'm thinking. It's where I'm leaning. I'm here. I have all day. I have all year. Like, I'm not going anywhere. So... Even if my intuition is wrong and we don't go down, right? I know my my position is one that I'm comfortable with, and I'll be happy to be wrong. Many people will be very happy if Litecoin and Bitcoin don't retrace again right now and continue upside, right? That's the Bitcoin above six thousand, cruising to seven thousand. That's the Litecoin breaking through a hundred. Many people, including myself, will be happy. I just have that feeling, that intuition based on charts, momentum, consolidation, overextension, that we're going to have a retracement. So uh, we'll see. This weekend is really telling. The next couple of days are really telling. Namely, we want to watch this weekly chart on Bitcoin. What, how, is this, how is this candle going to close, right? The daily chart, 
we zoom in here on this daily chart that we had open, the biggest question for me actually, even putting aside Litecoin, is what's going to happen with this rising wedge of Bitcoin right now? Sorry, it's taking me forever to zoom in on my charts, but we we have a nice higher high, but the, you know, look how many times, and this is kind of that emotional aspect of this game. Um, swing low to swing high, you know, within a week, 15% gains, right? Swing high. That swing high to swing low, 10% losses. That swing low to new swing high, 15%. Swing high to swing low, 10%. Swing low to swing high, 15%. And every time we get that 15% to swing high, you know, people go crazy. When we get a couple of days, back down retracements, people go crazy. I want to see, and this really, really sums up all this technical analysis. What do I want to see? Volume. I want to see massive breakout to the upside, to the upside target through this wedge, which is around like $6,300. Probably like right around there. Breaking through $6,000. It would be awesome. I want to see that. But what do I think is going to happen is resistance here on this higher high, back down testing the bottom of this wedge. All right, so swing high to new swing low, another 10% to the downside, potentially breaking through that downside for a downside target, right? Right around $4,700 or so. And if that happens, we will have closed. I mean, this is if this happens in the next few days. We will have closed on this weekly, or at least be trading on this weekly, below the 50 moving average. And that's very important to take note of if that happens. So please be prepared. Be prepared either way, everybody. Um, because obviously, these scenarios are very real. Both of these scenarios are very real, going back to this chart. Um, it's a beautiful looking rising wedge, right? It's just 15% to the upside, 10% to the downside, over and over again. So what next? We're there. Keep your charts open. Trading view is what I use. Um, I don't know what you use, but that's what I use. And I wanted to, we have some people here. I wanted to ask. I tweeted yesterday, like it was pretty ridiculous. It was my fault. It was my bad. There was this article, 11% of Americans own Bitcoin, major awareness increased since 2017. 11% of American population owns a major cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. According to a new survey, it was by blockchain capital partner, Bogart. They posted the results of a new survey conducted by Harris Poll in order to provide analytics data on Bitcoin's demographic trends. It was 2,052 American adults. 11% of Americans own Bitcoin. So like, obviously I read it and I said, I tweeted, I, I was stupid because there's definitely a play on words here. I just said, because this article, 11% of Americans own Bitcoin. I'm an idiot. And I write, 11% of Americans do not own Bitcoin. But do you... Are you picking up? Are you picking up what I'm throwing down, everybody? Like, do you see what I was saying? I was basically saying the poll is not. I don't agree with it, right? Some people definitely understood what I was saying. Some people didn't. A lot of people didn't. Somebody said, "Wow, 89% of Americans own Bitcoin." So anyway, I rephrased it and I said, "I'm literally saying that 11% of Americans do not own Bitcoin." <laughs> I just, you know, I'm digging myself a ditch. Then I did a video explaining what I'm saying. And here it is. I said, I do not think 11% of Americans own Bitcoin. So I want to propose a question to you. After all that ridiculousness, I need to learn how to tweet better, I guess. My question is, my question is, do you think, so 
Press one if you agree with this article. Do you really believe that 11% of Americans own Bitcoin? Press two if you think it's not right. Press one if you think 11% of Americans own Bitcoin. Press two if you think it's not right. I just am very curious what, what a lot of you all think out there. Twos. A lot of twos. I don't even know if I've seen one one. And I agree. And all of the like all of you all of you guys out there or girls. Like you're you're pressing that button number two because of your own personal experience in life, which is exactly what, what, what my video was about. You know, I work in the crypto space. I'm a recruiter for cryptocurrency startups. And I know what it's like to be entrenched in the space and feel like the whole world owns Bitcoin and knows what it is. But when I step out of my work, when I step out of this office and I enter the real world, I enter the world of my friends. There's no way 11% of Americans own Bitcoin. It's, it's just, there's no way. 11% of Americans do not own Bitcoin. I mean, I really, I, I, I really don't think I maybe. I don't know, I, I can't put a number on it, but I, w I was telling Sarah, I was like, we we should go and record me asking a hundred people if they own Bitcoin. I know it's not the the most scientific and best way to do a poll, but why not recording just me asking people if they own Bitcoin, and there's no way eleven percent of the Americans that I go out and ask are going to own Bitcoin. I bet you I could have a streak of asking 100, and I I bet you I could have a streak of asking 100 people if they own Bitcoin in Philly, and maybe I get one or two people that say they own Bitcoin. But at the very most, and this article talks about it a lot, the awareness aspect of this poll. And that's a different story. Awareness is different than actually owning, right? So I don't know what, I don't know. There's a fine line with these surveys and stuff. I still don't know exactly how they did it, but I tweeted about it yesterday and I truly, I truly don't think that 11% of Americans own Bitcoin. It's, it's far less than that in my opinion. So um, that's about it. Everybody go watch this movie or this video, Elon Musk, $2 super chat. Thanks, Liquid Canvas, for the super chat. Appreciate you. 95.4% of Bitcoin owners own less than one Bitcoin. Is that a true fact? That's crazy. That's crazy. Thanks for the super chat, Launchpad Foundation, Liquid Canvas. This video, everybody, Elon Musk talking about Teslas and talking about... Um, enabling robo taxi and in this short little clip at the beginning within the first minute he talks about how the exponential growth of of tesla in particular but the exponential growth of this technology so hard to wrap your head around and i'm just i'm just saying this again because i'm sure there's some people that weren't here but it's the same thing as cryptocurrency the exponential growth and you look at the hash rate of Litecoin, this is a great illustration. The, the exponential growth of, of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and its adoption is very difficult to wrap our heads around. I'm still wrapping, trying to wrap my head around it every day. And um, it's going to continue. And I'm telling you, when there's this intersection of cryptocurrencies and tech pioneers like Elon Musk and companies they're building, technologies they're building so you know the tesla competing with uber concept um it's where we're going to see massive growth and adoption of cryptocurrency and i'm piggybacking off of john kersey here in his tweets he says ps in five to seven years i bet each of these robo taxis will be accepting bitcoin and that's the kind of world that i truly envision for cryptocurrency and its adoption things like that happening and I really truly believe it's going to happen. We must be patient. We must keep plugging away. And um, now is the time to build. Now is the time to build. So that's it, everybody. Wrapping up 50 week moving average. Let's see how it closes.
let's see how it closes. Um, but right now you can see 50 week moving average if I zoom in on the charts. Talking about right on $5,400. That's where the 50 week moving average is. And you can see Bitcoin currently trading around $5,600. Is it gonna stay? What's gonna happen in the next 24, 48 hours? Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. it is so important. This fourth weekly candle here, ever since resistance at the weekly 50 moving average, so similar to that last bear market. So incredibly similar to that last bear market. So let's keep an eye on it, see what happens. Um, but here it is. Here is that last bear market, that fourth week after that resistance, we went down. Is Bitcoin going to diverge from that? And is Bitcoin going to go up? Very similarly, on my messy Litecoin chart, zoomed in, 50 moving average. On the daily chart, Litecoin diverging away, trading above. Is it going to continue? Will support hold? Will it continue to diverge from that last bear market? From that last bear market bottom where this didn't happen? Litecoin saw resistance at the 50 moving average and continued down. Well, now Litecoin above the 50 moving average. Will it continue? Let's see what happens in the next 24 to 48 hours. Whatever happens, are you prepared? That's it. This is just some data, this YouTube channel, myself, just throwing out some data to you. I'm sure you have a lot of other charts you're looking at on YouTube, on Twitter, TradingView, whatever. But at the end of the day, when you gather all of these charts and all of these opinions from all these people, myself included, are you ready? Are you prepared for upside and downside? Are, are you comfortable or are you overextended in your portfolio? That's a question to ask yourself, everybody. Don't take advice on making decisions from YouTubers, Twitter people. Sit back, make an informed decision based on your own situation. So as always, this is not financial advice. And I hope it got, I hope you get some value out of this. But that's it, everybody. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming by this live stream Friday afternoon. Um, let's track it. Follow me on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, Crypto Capital Venture or Crypto Recruiter, uh, try and post in real time if anything continues to happen. Really, really curious about this, this, uh, this rising wedge um, on Bitcoin charts right here. Very curious to see what happens in the coming days. Let's track it together. Uh, if you're here right now and you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of the channel. Uh, I really appreciate you. You Haven't been posting every day because we've been so busy um, getting ready to move. However, we're still posting. We're here right now. So I'd love to have you as part of the channel if you could subscribe. Super Chatters, overwhelmed. Thank you so much. Um, really, truly appreciate you. I hope you all have an amazing Friday. Be safe. Be cool. Have a good weekend. Let's see what happens. Have a great rest of the night. I will see you all in the next video. And God bless.